Hello friends and welcome to another video from Meloncast in which I will tell you some new amazing stories. But before we begin, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video. Also, don't forget to write your thoughts about these stories in the comments. Our first story is, Neighbor is harassing us and complaining to the HOA all the time. My father takes revenge on her, and then Karma gives her neighbors that she can't complain about. To give some context, I'm from Brazil and my parents have always lived a, financially speaking, comfortable life. Around 2011, they started building a house in a closed condominium. I'm pretty sure this isn't the right term in English, but I couldn't find anything similar. A closed condominium, CC for short, is a type of housing here that basically is a fortress. It's a huge area, bearing easily over 50 houses, all of them surrounded by a huge concrete wall and have 24-hour security. Neighbor on the right side didn't live there, was selling the house, so never bothered us. But boy was the neighbor family on the left extremely entitled. Not all of them to be fair, the father and the sister were pretty cool. They hand-picked that land because the land we were building our house on was owned by a fellow that passed away and his children were fighting over heritage. So they assumed they would have a few decades of peace, but the issue was resolved in less than six months, and they sold the land to us. In that CC, there was a rule that allowed construction work to be performed between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. between Monday and Friday, and the EM made sure to have us follow that rule. If they started working at 8.58 a.m., or they were still at the house at 5.01 p.m., she would call HOA. Don't know if this name applies here, but I think it's the closest that we have. The CC was managed by homeowners. To file a complaint, which made the construction last way longer than it was supposed to. We had to work between 9.30 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. after some point. I'm not joking about the 5.01 p.m. There was a day that we literally received a phone call at that time from the HOA asking to have the workers leave the house after an anonymous complaint. When the construction was finally finished and we moved in early 2013, we thought we would have some peace. But boy, were we wrong. She would call to the HOA to complain about any noise we made. There was a rule that loud noises were only allowed between 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. weekdays and weekends alike. And we didn't make noise in other times. However, she would make excuses saying she had headaches, had to wake up early, etc. We really believe that any kind of sound annoys her. I'm not really sure how her husband even tolerates her. And the HOA would call us because they didn't want to handle her being. There was a particular time that we had to end a birthday party at 4 p.m. because she was complaining about the music and saying that our guests were blocking her driveway when there wasn't even a single car parked in front of her home. Related to that case, she also wouldn't tolerate anyone parking in front of her house. There's no specific rule stating that people can't park in front of other houses. You only can't park in a driveway, to the point where she would threaten to call a tow truck. However, her guests would always park in front of our driveway, forcing us to call the HOA and get some nasty looks from her when they had to remove the car. All of this was horrible, but manageable. My family doesn't party that much, only birthdays, and we would call eight people at most, so we were only annoyed by her four times a year at most. However, here comes ES. In Brazil, it's common for sons or daughters to stay at home until they finish college, sometimes up until getting married. But ES was a special case. He was in his mid-30s, had a job working for his father, basically sat at home watching TV and smoking weed, which is illegal here all day, was extremely entitled and owned a tuned Subaru something or another. All of this would be okay as it is, but he had to be a D. He would call his super employed friends, who also happened to have tuned cars, to listen to music and smoke weed almost every Thursday until 4 a.m. when EM wasn't at home. Not happy with making loud noises with the music until that time, they would also get in their cars and start freaking stepping in the gas for several minutes before leaving, waking the entire neighborhood in the process. Me and my sister at the time were in college. I had to wake up at 4.30 a.m. and she at 6 a.m. So Fridays were a pain for both of us. 
Several complaints were filed against them, but HOA was too afraid of EM to do anything about it, other than asking her to stop making noises, which she denied, since her son was precious, and HOA would leave it alone. My sister was fed up with it one day and decided to complain directly to her. The result was being name-called, a B-word, liar, jealous, etc., and ridiculed by the ES. He said that she didn't know squat about cars, that they had to do this when it was cold or else the oil would freeze. Have I mentioned that we live in Brazil? Here during winter, the temperature rarely goes under 20 Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit for my neighbors from the north. After that, ES made sure to make my sister's life as heckish as he could, would block her car whenever he could when he saw her leaving our home, would turn on the music as loud as he could, facing her window when EM wasn't at home, etc. My parents are the kind of people to leave things alone. That's why they didn't bother to challenge her. But my father was a little vengeful. He's the kind of person that spent more on the home theater system than in the rest of the appliances at home. After that incident, he would proceed to turn the music as loud as he could every Saturday and Sunday at 8.01 a.m. He designed the sound system to not let almost any sound from the home theater to leak inside our house. So that didn't wake us up. EM would call HOA to complain, HOA would call my father and he would ask them what he was doing wrong, which would prompt no response from the HOA. Unfortunately, that revenge only lasted about six months from our side, because my parents moved away. Me and my sister left our home as well before that. However, we found out that the people who bought our house not only were karaoke people, but also the father from the family is a big balls public district attorney. No one in their right mind would dare mess with one here, since corruption is really strong and they can make things happen as they please. So EM never dared to complain about it. Wow, how the heck do you even live there? I'd definitely do something about those neighbors. I'd at least call the police on this titular son. Anything he's done, like disturbing the peace at night and smoking illegal substances, could lead to a pretty big sentence. That should be handled by the police. But now, thank goodness, I don't think he can have all that fun anymore. The prosecutor next door is an impressive figure, but I wish they'd put that EUA hole away for a couple of years. And yes, HOAs are not homeowners associations. They're heck on adversaries. Why anyone would choose to live in an HOA, I don't understand. Even if, in your case, it's not really an HOA. Living in a complex behind a concrete wall may be considered safe by some, but not in your situation better in a bank with rats. And now our second story is about to quit the heck out of my a-hole boss. So in 2019, I qualified for a poker tournament in Las Vegas. I live in Texas, which had a $250,000 prize pool through my local bar league. I had tickets for a hotel and flight, but we all know what happened in 2020. The prize pool got rolled over to this year when the tournament was canceled, and I earned a second qualification in the meantime, meaning I had two shots to play for a half a million dollars. Life-changing amounts of money. I worked my A off studying and preparing for this tournament. I let my boss know in May when the new dates were up that I would be gone. No questions asked. I haven't had a great life the last 10 years, but I managed to claw my way out of abject poverty into owning a home and staying on top of debt just barely. A week before I left, I reminded him of my week off, and he barely remembered. I am the only employee at the location I work at. I deal with customers and order parts for the vehicles being worked on, and do all of the labor as well. I make $7.25 a week after taxes, working 58 plus hours a week. I landed in Las Vegas on Sunday and informed my boss I was here. I didn't block his number just to see if he'd call, and if there was an emergency that he needed me for, I'd be able to answer at least via text. On Tuesday, I got three calls from another employee asking questions which were answered by the note that I had left when leaving. Boss texted multiple times with the same questions. On Wednesday, I woke up to a text at 7 a.m. Call me. F no, I'm not calling you on my vacation. My first vacation in 10 years my first time in Vegas, and my first six-figure poker tournament. I ignored the text because if it was important, he'd call, or at least text what he needed. I was two hours into the first eight hours of the tournament, and he started blowing up my phone, asking me trivial BS questions that did not 
warrant blowing up my phone in the middle of the biggest poker tournament I've ever played, halfway through my vacation. I couldn't focus. I was angry and resentful and wound up getting busted out of the tournament much earlier than I should have been because I couldn't focus on the game, just on the fact that he's calling me about non-issues that I couldn't even help with anyway. It ruined my mood and vacation for the last two days, and I'm still trying to get out of my own head and have a good time. So I decided when I get back on Monday, I'm packing up my tools and going elsewhere, somewhere where I'm not working 60 plus hours a week, commuting nearly an hour each way for what amounts to less than what McDonald's employees would make working the same hours, working in 100 plus degree weather in a very technical field, auto repair. A couple of months ago, I went off on him about not respecting my personal time or needs. I needed to get new glasses and see a dentist for the first time in five years for a cleaning at the very least. I had one at 10 a.m. and one at 3 p.m. He wanted me to come in at 8 a.m., then drive 30 minutes to my first appointment, come back to work, then leave for another 30-minute drive to the second, then back to work again until close. I told him he's insane to get me to drive nearly four hours to work for less than three while I had appointments to make and just stayed out the entire time. He'd constantly make me stay late to have customers pick up their cars after hours, sometimes as late as an hour after closing. I'm done giving myself away. Two years of dedicating my time and efforts to this place has yielded absolutely no rewards of any kind, and I can't even be left alone on my one week I asked off. Two years in advance. Congratulations. You've known for a long time that you deserve better, and now there's an enforcement feature. As a small aside, while furiously leaving the company is really nice as an F you to the a-hole management, one piece of advice. Find another job first. I know it's not a very pleasant thought, but not having a job and not being able to find something else quickly causes a different type of stress. I was fired three times in my life. I was sure I would be able to find something in a reasonable amount of time, but it didn't happen. It took much longer than I expected. I had to live on credit cards for a while, and it took forever to pay them off. Take advantage of the weekend to overcome mental anger and make sure you always take care of yourself first. A one-time endorphin rush to hook up with a lame piece of s boss who isn't worth your time anyway isn't worth it if you don't have a plan. Good luck with that. You deserve to work in a healthy environment. Be well. And our last story for today is the manager didn't listen to me and in the end, half of the staff quit and the company closed. Can you come in this weekend to work? Nopes. No can do. Why? Busy. It's Sunday. What do you have to do on Sunday? I like cleaning cobwebs. So I take a long-handled broom and walk around the neighborhood asking random people if they would like me to clean their homes. What kind of reply is that? It means, what I do on Sunday is none of your business, and don't ask me that question again, unless you're dying. And FYI, if you are dying, I'll assume the office is closed for the next 13 days and morning. I will, of course, send a nice condolence message to your home with a bouquet. This work needs to be completed before Monday. No. I've sent the last batch to customer on Thursday, asking them to give feedback by Monday and outlining various options and timelines. We will not be doing any work on the project till we hear from them and only work on the lines they approve of. I still think we should do the work this way. Look, I am the project manager. I'm speaking to the customer and I'm answerable to them. You are not a technical person. You have zero idea what you're asking. The approach you're suggesting is a waste of time and will not work. We have already discussed and rejected it even before the project began. He goes ahead and calls the team to work on the approach he wanted to adopt. They work on the weekend and run into the snags I warned them about. In his pettiness, he has them delete the backup files of the work I submitted and overwrite the raw files with his changes. I come in on Monday and find out he and his lackeys have destroyed one month's work. I resign on the spot. So does the rest of the team. Five resignations from a team of seven in a single day. Only the people who worked on the weekend are left. They lose the project when the client hears of the snafu. The project manager from the customer team called me on my personal phone to find out what happened. The other partners are livid. Company closes down. 
bro. That's awful and sounds like stress. Some people just want to feel like they're running the company. And as we can see from your story, it leads to such fatal consequences. And if that stupid manager had listened to you, the company would have survived and continued to exist. But no, he had to show that he's the big boss and he will decide everything himself. And what has he achieved? <laughs> Nothing, idiot. Friends, thank you for watching this video. Just a reminder, subscribe, like, and comment. See you soon.